We save the best for last for you ladies. So good morning, and as we begin, let us go to the Lord in prayer today. Father God, thank you for your love and that we have the ability to love you and to know you through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for our ladies. Thank you for women in general, Father. You've made a marvelous creation for us. And we are truly blessed. Father, as we this morning get into your word to gain an understanding of the role of a woman and what something is, what can be seen as simple as a person's hair or covering can be viewed in such high regard, not only by the Apostle Paul, but by you. And what these things say about the woman, but more so of you. God, you are holy and you are all knowing. You've laid out a plan for this world. Help us to see that and to act accordingly. Father, thank you for these words. Thank you for your Apostle Paul leading us to these scriptures. And I ask that you use your Holy Spirit in a mighty way this morning for us. We love you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So ladies, some of you have your hats. Some of them have them on. That is perfectly fine. But if you haven't put them on, I would say hold off on putting them on just as of yet. As you have most likely guessed, we are talking about hair, head coverings, or both. You may have asked yourself, why? Why is this important? Why did we bring this up? Why is it worthy of being preached? Well, one, it's scripture. Two, Paul is speaking to this of a large chunk of scripture for 16 verses. So obviously it is of some importance. And I promise it may seem like I'm bouncing all over the place in scripture. Don't worry, I am. Because of the nature of this text and because we live in a completely different day and age, we have to go back and forth to really understand what Paul is trying to get. And if I just tried to go through the scripture, it may seem as if we're talking about man's authority over woman, woman's authority with hair, etc. It may be a little confusing. So we are going to go back and forth. But again, I need to preface this, which validates the going back and forth. In verse 10, look with me, and we'll go through these texts together throughout the sermon. That is why a wife ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. I've seen many of your eyes. What does that mean? Because of the angels. Well, there are two views. I'm going to give you both, and I'm going to give you the view or tell you the view that I pretty much gravitate to. Number one, the woman have a showing of authority from her husband as he is her authority, because this is the natural order of the world that she displayed the authority given her by her husband, so not to insult those whom, angels, who have been witness to the divine, the divine order, nature, or the natural order of things. The insult is that they see something outside of God's intended order as devout beings. It's an insult for them to see something unnatural as they are the messengers of this world sent to observe and report back to God. An example of this would come from Job chapter 38, verse 4 through 7, won't we? Where, you, when I, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who, determ who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Y'all know this situation. Job is being raked over the coals because he finally, God's finally had enough of everything going on. And God is demanding a question. Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stressed out the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together? The morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. 
These are the angels. You see that whenever they were witness to creation, they were excited and joyful. That's where one view comes of being, that they were insulted because everything that we, they see in the world, or even something like hair, is an insult to them because they were witness to something marvelous. They were witness to perfection. As if angels, to see something so off-putting harms the image of creation that they found their joy in. Now, the second view, the sign is both a sign given to her by man and over the rest of creation, even over angels. A woman's authority gives first came from her father, then from husband, as she is the last and best part of creation, of the creation aspect over humanity, as you will see in verse 11 and verse 12 later on. And her hair or covering is a symbol of that authority. I lean towards the second view. As you'll see later on in verse 11 and 12, that a woman has been given an intricate part in creation. So her hair, let's talk about that first. Now, I want you to have a, the right frame of mind and do not believe there is such an issue. And I don't believe that there is such an issue going on in our church that we're bringing this text out. Again, as the last several months have been going on and we've gone through the Christ is All series, it's meant to get our minds wrapped around how we interact with people that come to us with specific issues or problems. This would be of a woman or a young woman coming to you needing guidance or having a, a very skewed view of womanhood in this world. How do we talk to them? How do we raise our young ladies, how we interact with our grandchildren, those who we meet in the women's Bible studies that are going on on Wednesdays. But I do believe that the world's view of women or woman is terrible. And as we learn and practice counseling people in this world, we'll have a better way of talking to them about what God's view of women is, because ultimately his view is more important not of any man's or any idea that the world presents. God's view of a woman is paramount above everything else. So God, or excuse me, God and Christ and man and creation, we are responsible to give women truth of who she is, of who you are, ladies. So Paul is dealing with an issue of, of women who were letting their hair down and shaking it off in opposition of God's divine order for women in the intent of the use of their hair. Again, this seems just so minuscule. Why is this a, a thing that we need to talk about? Well, it's a perfect example of what God's intended purpose is. There is a view of God's intended purpose for hair and how it should be done up updued or prepared as a matter of fact throughout all history even before abram was called out of canaan even to the pagan kings pagan religions women had their hair fixed a certain way can you guess which way it was it was a bun even locks even to be turned and twisted ornately and pretty that was common even in egyptian hieroglyphs you would see the images you can go online and look the women's hair is most often done up. Oftentimes that it was put down was whenever it was depicted with their husband or their spouse. It was meant for them alone. It was proper for women to keep their hair neat and tidy, even into the Old Testament. In one instance in Numbers chapter 15, or excuse me, Numbers chapter 5, verse 11 through 18, it describes a woman who was caught in, ad in adultery. She was brought before the rest of the people and the priest would actually let her tear down and give her a grain offering as a remembrance for everyone else to see that this woman was caught in adultery. Now that seems harsh. But think about what she had done to the sanctity of marriage. She had spat on an institute that God had created. So this is to remind everybody, don't do this. Keep your marriage pure and holy and safe before the Lord. But this idea of letting your hair down was to make her look the part. 
Now, I'm not saying that, ladies, if you have long hair, that's not what this means if you're letting it hang down. That's a style today. What the issue was back then is how they were so careful of how they presented themselves before the rest of mankind. The issue in current Corinth was that these women were behaving lewdly, intentionally. That's it, is intent in dealing with their hair. They were wanting to look the part. They didn't care. Do we see that in culture today? Even as far as clothing and appearance of young ladies presenting themselves. You can't walk around nowadays and not see a young lady just not caring. And then they get insulted if men look at them and say that they shouldn't. But you've all heard just the statement, let your hair down, just relax. Just don't care anymore. That's the idea that the world is presenting to women. Just let your hair down. Don't care. Relax. Don't have any pride in, in what God has given you. Some practices of religion, and not just in Muslim. Sorry, my computer went bonkers for a second. Okay, we're still recording. I apologize. But some religions, not just Muslims, but even Christian groups, even today, teach that women should wear veils. Have you heard of that? We've heard of it. You've probably even seen some of that. The only times that this comes up in, is in verse 15. I don't have it here. But the issue with the word veil or covering, parabolio, is not even in the text, at least not in the way we understand this piece of clothing as a veil. So it's either a hat or hair or veil. What, what's, what are we talking about? But again, we find out in verse 15 and we'll get there. But if a woman has long hair, and this is what it says, if a woman has long hair, it is her glory for her hair is given to her as a covering. That word covering right there is where we get the word veil, but it's not the word veil that we tend to think of it as. It just means a covering. So... Ladies, according to the, this misinterpretation that some people are using about a veil, you should pull your hair forward and look like Cousin It. What do you think, ladies? Is that the, that's the new style. Fairdale Baptist Church starts the new trend, the It. I've seen Haley's actually done that one before. It's quite humorous, but... She has that long hair to do it. So her hair is, a, is her veil, right? Not as we see it and not as we may interpret it as, but it is a covering, literally a covering. Why is Paul so concerned? Ladies, do me a favor. I need you all to just say this for me. Say, get to the point. Okay, well, somebody yelled at me. I, was being, I didn't say yell, I just say it. But okay, verse three, as we go through the text this morning, and why he is so concerned with this. So verse three says this. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Paul explains the authority in headship, first from God to Christ to man, the woman. So if you disgrace one, you disgrace the other. Verse four and five it says this, every man who prays and prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head, but every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head since it is the same as if her head were shaven. Now, hold on for a second. If a man prays or prophesies with a covering on his head, he's disgracing his head. This head? Or that head? Because then later on, it actually describes that if a woman prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, it disgraces her head or that head. Would it be better than be shaven? Shave God's head? No. So... It's talking about the authority and disrespecting that authority that has been shown or extended to you in a symbol. 
But wait, if she prophesies, whoa, 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 hold on. But women aren't supposed to do that, right? Is that what scripture teaches? No, that is not what it, scripture says. Now, many of you would think to look two chapters ahead in chapter 14, where it actually tells us that a woman is not to speak in church. It does say that. So then why is Paul here maybe having a contradiction? Number one, I am 100%, I believe that the Bible is an inerrant, infallible word of God. Every word of it is true. Every word of it is profitable. So there's no contradiction whatsoever. So then how do we deal with this? Well, one is about speaking in church. The other one is about praying and prophesying. So it is actually good for women because it gives you the authority, scriptural authority, that you are supposed to be telling people about Christ and praying. But if you do so, make sure that your head is covered. Again, with the hair or the, with the veil, the covering. Well, we'll get to that. But then the speaking of church, these are two separate issues. So as we look at these texts, we're not going to look at chapter 14, but understand that they are two separate, distinct situations that he is speaking to. That's why he waits till chapter 14 to address that. And we'll address that in another day. But ladies, you have every right. You have the responsibility to pray and prophesy. Period. Men, as we do, likewise, we don't do it with our head covered. That's why it's been a, such a good habit that men would take off their hat before they pray. Really, if they take their hat off or their covering, for us it's hats, coverings back then, remove that before they even read scripture as honoring their head. So, but if you notice throughout the New Testament that Paul is not just dogging women, He's not just attacking women. He doesn't do that. As a matter of fact, if you've read Acts in a, almost every letter written by Paul, he's praising women. Actually, send the letters in one of the first addresses. He's saying, hey, tell so-and-so, I'm very proud of them. Keep doing the good work. Think of Lydia. God has, Paul has continuously praised women for their work for the Lord. So don't think that it is Paul being sexist in a day that many people like to use these texts and just downtrodden women. And that's not what Paul's doing this, nor what the text today is about. Verse six. For if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. But since it is disgraceful for a wife to cut her hair, cut off her hair or shave her head, let her cover her head. So leave your hair long, shave it short, put a hat on. It, it, ladies, if you're going to disgrace God, this is it. Go ahead and just shave your head. Might as well. But since we obviously know that it is disgraceful for a woman, not unlawful, not, but it is disgraceful, it's like odd for a woman to do that intentionally. Again, the intent is to disgrace God. Obviously, we have so many medical issues that that has to happen to some, some people. And I've seen those videos where a husband has to help her wife, his wife shave her head for treatments and everything. And then he'll turn around and shave his own hair just out of respect and love for her. But we have those type of situations. But ladies, let your head be covered. So it seems confusing. So are we talking about the head? Are we talking about the head, which is God to Christ, a man to woman? Is it her hair? Is it an actual hat? Well, he uses words covering and hair. So which is it? Well, just to be safe, ladies, if you don't have your hat on right now, let's go ahead and put your hats on, since many of you already do. But ladies, again, say it with me. Say it for me. Ladies, get to the point. Say it. Well, you're a little softer. You're not quite yelling at me, but keep your hat on. We'll get there, I promise. Verse 7 to 10. For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But women, but woman is the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a wife ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angel. See, we just went back over this. 
these verses can be greatly misunderstood and they're trying and Paul is trying to and for what Paul is trying to say men and maybe some preachers would simply preach these texts for the last hundreds of years and just leave it at that and just say something like women you don't have the authority the men do we have all the authority we're it you respect us men and men and men just being ugly and mean with it because that is documented that that has happened throughout history. That men have mistreated women. Is it even going on today? I mean, a culture of people now believe today that Christians believe women are subspecies that are so less of a human being. And you hear and see people out in cultures, why, why do y'all mistreat women? You're a Christian and you're supposed to love people and you're mean to women. They'll say this and it's because... It happened that men have mistreated women, even in Christendom. But now, even more so in culture, have men mistreated women, abusing them in various ways. If we stop right here, we would we could leave it with the truth that men do not need a cover because men are the glory of God, meaning our, or excuse me, women are the glory of God. They are our splendor. You are our splendor. And women were made for man, therefore our glory. I mean, we could just leave it at that, right? But we got to do verse 11 and 12. So verse 11 and 12 says this. Nevertheless, in the Lord... Woman is not independent of man, nor man of woman. For as woman has, was made from man, so man is now born of woman, and all things are from God. As Brother Jeff said, all things are from God. Governments, even the, the way our created world works, that woman came from man, but we're not independent of. Life cannot go on without you ladies. You are truly a blessing and remarkable piece of work. He broke the mold when he made woman. There was no need to do anything else. He had given the world everything that we need to move on. You are a tremendous blessing. The old statement and many of you ladies, maybe you've said it. I know my mom said it to me before. I brought you into this world. Is what? What is that statement? It's an assertion of your authority. Right? It is. So, no matter what, even if you have boys, those two little boys back there, Realize that their mama is their authority. But there are some people in the world that still try to practice that even those little boys are an authority over their own mother. God made it this way on purpose. God gave us woman and gave you a specific thing to demonstrate that authority. It did not say in Scripture, son, a son shall leave his father and be cleaved to his wife. That's not what it says. What does it say? A son will leave his father and mother and be cleaved to his wife. There is a duality in the authority given to man in creation over the family. You're not separate. You're together on it. Paul directed the Holy Spirit, uh, directed through the Holy Spirit, is now pointing us to the beginning is with verses eleven and twelve about na natural order of the world. He begs the question in verse thirteen, which says this: "Judge for yourselves: Is it proper for a wife to pray to God with her head uncovered? Is it proper for a woman to pray to God in disgrace?" Meaning. Is it proper to talk to the
the life and honor given without display of her authority by means of intentionally or dishonorably shaving her head or just letting her hair down and not doing anything that shows credit where credit is due, not making her, her, her hair presentable or at the very least wearing a hat. The answer is found in verse 14 through 16. Read with me. Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is a disgrace for him? But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory, for her hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone is inclined to be contentious, we have no such practice, nor do the churches of God. The point Paul is making, as you have asked me a few times for, that people naturally assert femininity if they are a woman with long hair. No, I'm not poking or calling attention to men with long hair in this world or even in our congregation. This is not a joke. I'm not making a jab. Our day and age has made it a matter of style and personal preference. But long hair in its originality is a symbol of femininity. What was going on then is that men were seen as being disgraceful and unmanly, like and most likely making themselves seem more feminine. Remember where they are. Remember what country or nation was ruling the world at this time. It was Rome. They were commonly referred to as boy lovers because homosexuality was running rampant. It was prevalent. It was common. As I preached through the book, uh, book of Ephesians a while back, I showed you an image where they, right across from the library in Ephesus, there was a house directly across where a man or a woman could go and find company of a specific gender, male or female. They had businesses like that. So that's the underlying issue that even is still going on in Corinth. Brother Jeff had a slide up earlier that said, uh, it's a letter to the church in Corinth. Please stop. Because both of these letters, and technically there's four letters, was of discipline because of the dumb stuff that they were doing. That's what this point is, is the unmanly and intentional femininity of the men in that culture. Remember, or today, is become, again, a matter of expression of style and character. As I grew up being called a skinhead because I had my head shaved all day long every day. I hated doing my hair, so instead I traded it to have to groom a beard. But a woman, her hair is her glory, is as we have said, the expression of honor. And no, I'm not dogging anyone because you have short hair. Again, it's preference less to have to manage. But you have hair, you have a covering. So what has gone on is you are a walking, talking, breathing representation of the God-given authority over creation, ladies, with your hair or your hat. Think of that. So if you counsel someone, or maybe you're dealing with this and you're born just feeling down about... I feel downtrodden in life. I'm sad and I'm depressed. Or maybe you grew up just being looked at as second rate. You're not, ladies. And you explain this to young ladies as they grow up. You are given a physical gift and representation, a crown on your head to show the rest of the world God is wonderful. God is good. And he has gifted you with something special to show the rest of the world that God is great and beautiful. I tell my wife all the time, one of my favorite things to look at of her is her hair. I like to walk up behind her and do that to her hair. I love her hair. It seems weird. I don't know if anybody else is like that. She'll get annoyed. Don't touch me. But that to me is just, and no, it wasn't because of this text or anything. I just am drawn to that thing. But ladies, you have a crown to demonstrate your authority in creation. So God didn't just make man a partner. He made the partner to demonstrate God's glory in the 
dissemination of authority, first from God, then to Christ, then to man, to woman, and to say at this, all of those things are wonderful and beautiful. Yes, it is. There's the, uh, the other silver lining for the men. Women's authority points to man, but then it goes to Christ, then it goes to God. And if one is defamed, disgraced, you disgrace them all. The idea was for women to present themselves always glorifying God. That's it. So if you wear a hat to church, please do. If you have your hair put down, fine. Be presentable. With the intent of not proclaiming to the rest of the world, like, I don't care. You're meant to be seen as a beautiful representation of God's creation. So walk proudly with that. You are a woman. This is the last point. You are a woman. You are honorable. You are authoritative, beautiful creation made for a glorious purpose. And don't you dare forget it. A walking, talking testimony of God's glory as a matter of of who you are, Genesis 2, 23, has expressed how big of a blessing you are to man in creation when Adam says, at last. Man's best friend is not dog because God tried to give him a partner, just tried to give him some company. The animals didn't do it. It was woman at last. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. At last, a suitable companion. Someone who can help man to keep up with notations. Keep up with information. To keep up with their shoes. My wife is good to me. Has left me a note that is on my Bible right now so that I remember to share this whenever it comes for announcements. Men were not the crowning achievement. You were. You were the last. For that you show your glory to the world and take joy, not sadness, in your gender. You are, as Proverbs 31 says, more precious than jewels. Take joy in the fact that you are woman. As verse 16 says, don't fight who a woman is before God. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this time and thank you for your word.